So what is all this talk about dielectric unions, electrolysis, galvanic corrosion? All I want to do is install a water heater. You know what, guys? Stick around. I'm going to explain that to you coming up, so don't go anywhere. Hey, welcome folks, Bob here from BobsPlumbingVideos.com. On this channel, I provide free plumbing tutorials for people who don't want to call a plumber. No scientific data, no fancy chemical breakdown of the materials I use in these videos, just common sense solutions to everyday plumbing problems. After all, folks, you shouldn't have to take out a mortgage to be able to afford a plumber. If you're new to the channel, I highly recommend you subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit that bell notification so you'll be notified of when I post a new video. Now, let's get into this video. Oops, I almost forgot. Get lost. All right, let's get into this. Now, for the scientists out there that are going to critique me, let me first give uh, you guys the definition of electrolysis and galvanic corrosion. A, electrolysis is the forced introduction of an electrical current in an electrolyte to cause a chemical reaction to separate the components of water. Now, on the other hand, galvanic corrosion is an electrical chemical reaction that causes electrons to flow from one metal to another. What does this all mean? This basically all means you can't mix copper pipe or brass pipe with galvanized pipe, because if you do, take a look at the picture on the left. That's what happens. The galvanized is going to corrode, and over time it'll corrode, it'll deteriorate, not only on the outside, but on the inside, especially if that nipple coming out of the water heater is not insulated. It'll close up. You'll get hardening of the arteries of your plumbing system, and the complaint generally is my hot water pressure has gotten worse over the years. So since I got enlightened, which was many, many moons ago, when I install a water heater, all I use are dielectric unions. And I only use the, the types that are female threaded on one end and copper sweat on the other end. And I'll go over that on the bench. I'm, I'm going to bring one up and I'll, and I'll show you um, what's inside there. But, but briefly, inside that union, if you could loosen that collar nut and lift it up, there is a rubber gasket separating the galvanized bottom portion from the brass upper portion. You also had that red... Um, nylon gasket that's separating the collar from the upper portion of the connector, the brass portion of the connector. So it separates, again, the galvanized from the brass. And that retards the corrosion. But I will tell you, I've taken water heaters out whereby I've installed these unions. And even with these unions on there, I've witnessed galvanic corrosion on the inside. Not a lot, but it still happens. Unfortunately, it still happens. And what I try to do is I try to get uh, nipples, insulated nipples that are anywhere from maybe three to three and a half inches long. I want, I want to get them as far out of the connection on the water heater as I can. Because um, those, those connections inside the water heater, the female connections that you screw in your nipples to, uh, they're actually, they're welded on connections. They're not, they're not tapped directly into the tank. Well, they're tapped, but those tapped connections are welded into the top of the tank. And if you don't use a dielectric union, you know, that galvanic corrosion is just going to start eating away at, at the wells. And, uh, you know, in extreme cases, it's just going to cause premature leaking. I mean, I, I haven't seen a weld blow out. But nevertheless, so now that you have an idea of what electrolysis is and galvanic corrosion is, let's go on the bench and I'll bring up this dielectric union, take it apart, break it down, explain it to you. And uh, I would hope that in the future, if you're having a water heater installed or if you're doing one yourself, go to the home center, go to the plumbing supply, get yourself a couple of three quarter inch insulated nipples and get yourself a couple of dielectric unions. You're going to get three quarter inch copper, which is the top part, by three quarter inch IPS, which is the bottom part. So you'll be able to screw that onto the nipple, into the heater, and then you can proceed to run away with copper pipe. So I'll see you on the bench. 
All right, real quick, I want to take you down to a water heater in my shop. Actually, we're in the basement of my shop, and you can see I put this in in 2011, and I want to show you these dielectric unions here. As you can see, it's really, really incredibly clean, incredibly clean. There's literally no corrosion on here, and that's the idea. You want to keep that corrosion at bay because if you screw copper or brass directly into the tank, you're going to get that galvanic corrosion, and it's literally going to make the connections at the top of the heater prematurely fail. So by all means, if you have the opportunity to have a heater put in or you're going to install one yourself, I highly recommend you use the dielectric unions. It's just absolutely going to extend the life of your water heater. And now that you see in real life what they look like, Let's jump to the top of the bench and I will uh, break it apart and give you an inside view of these dielectric unions. All right, we're back at the bench and here we have a few examples of dielectric unions. Let me bring up first the ones that I use mainly. These are the ones that you see in the screencast. The bottom is IPS where you can screw it onto the dielectric nipple. The top converts to copper. This is a plastic gasket that separates this collar from the brass. And also inside of here, there is a gasket that separates the brass from the dielectric portion of the union. There's a gasket right in here. So that maintains the separation and keeps the galvanic corrosion to a minimum. Now, I would recommend using the copper by IPS versions. But they do make double IPS versions. So you have screw type here on top, and you have screw type on the bottom. Same thing, has the same insulated nylon sleeve, has the same rubber gasket in the middle. In this case, you can simply, if you wanted to go back to copper, you could use a copper adapter on top of this and then convert to copper. What you don't want to do is you, you don't want to go directly into a water heater with copper. I see guys uh, install male adapters right into the top of the water heater. I see them put brass nipples with female adapters, and that's when all the trouble starts. Uh, in today's world, most of the water heater manufacturers do supply the water heaters with the insulated nipples already installed. If they're not already installed, they will supply them in a package inside the bag. Now. What I didn't realize when I purchased these nipples for this demonstration was that they have heat traps in them. And heat traps were a gimmicky thing. And I don't know if you can see here, but there's a little rubber diaphragm in here, so to speak. Let me see if I can. There's a little rubbery, it's a little movable, it's a two way movable rubbery diaphragm. So. If it's on the cold water side, you know, as the cold water goes in, the, the, the little piece of rubber will, will um, you know, let the flow of water in. Uh, and on the opposite side, the little rubber diaphragm will let the hot water out. Uh, when nobody's using anything, in theory, these are in the neutral position, which are supposed to keep the heated water uh, in the heater and not migrate out into the system. But frankly, I don't think these are worth their salt. But what is worth the salt is to get insulated nipples, and I would recommend getting them without these little heat traps. And honestly, you can just poke that out of there. You can just grab it with a pair of needle nose pliers and get it out of there. But I like keeping the, uh, the union as far away from the top of the heater as I can. Now, I will tell you that they make these unions where there's a male thread on the bottom. So you have a male thread by female copper. So this is obviously a female IPS version by copper. So with the male versions, you can screw them right into the top of the water heater. But I don't like to keep these unions very close to the water heater. I like to get them up. So that's why I opt to use a nipple. And these are generally three to three and a half inches, depending upon who the manufacturer is. But this is, this is the way I would start 
with a water heater installation. There's no question in my mind. This is the way I would start. I wouldn't get involved in uh, going directly into the top of the water heater with either copper or brass. And what I do do when I prep these things, I do put Teflon on them. And this Teflon's gonna go in the clockwise direction because that's gonna maintain a nice separation as well. And I do coat this. I will follow this up with a coating of, uh, I use a product called Megalock. It's a multi-purpose uh, pipe joint compound and I'll leave a link to a video I did about that up in the cards above. And uh, yeah, so this is my recommendation. If you're gonna have somebody install a water heater for you or you're gonna do it yourself, I would highly recommend that you uh, ask them to use dielectric unions and dielectric nipples. This is, as you can see on, on the water heater that I just showed you, my water heater, that's been in there since 2011. There are no signs of corrosion anywhere. I, I will tell you, I've taken these apart and I've, I've seen at the bottom where it actually goes into the heater, little bit of corrosion happening, but you know what? I mean, you can't help that. I don't think you're gonna be 100% able to avoid everything. And by the way, if you're gonna use these heat traps, the heat traps, the heat traps would face up. So this end goes into the heater, the open end goes into the heater, then you would put your union on here with your Teflon. And then, like I said, in theory, these heat traps are supposed to keep the water from migrating back into the system. But my personal opinion is, I don't think you need them, but that's just me. Now, I will leave links to, uh, to these unions and nipples in the description box below the video. Also, if you're interested in water heater maintenance, check the cards out up above in the right hand corner, I believe of this video and check out a link to the water heater maintenance video I did in the description box below. And that's pretty much it guys. Uh, you know, electrolysis, galvanic corrosion, you can avoid it by using a dielectric union. I would recommend this 100% whenever you install a water heater or if you're going to have somebody put the water heater in for you, I would absolutely ask them, do you use dielectric unions? And that's it guys. Pretty simple, not too difficult. And I'm confident that you guys can do this without too much difficulty. Also, one other thing I wanted you to keep in mind is this. If you're going to be doing this yourself and you're soldering this copper portion of the union you have to get this gasket up and out of the way so on a vertical run i would say minimally 18 inches get it up and out of the way tie it up with a string tie it up with a rag tie it up with a carpenter's clamp you have to get this up out of the way because you can't let the heat get to this nylon sleeve and when you do solder this you can't let any solder migrate onto the face of this because it's going to screw things up it's going to be a nice neat soldering job this face has to be absolutely smooth so this gasket can sit on here. You can't be having any solder sitting on the face of this. So if you do get some solder through there, you better get it off and get this nylon sleeve up and out of the way of the heat. So just keep that in mind if you're gonna do this yourself. And then after everything is all done, you can, you can drop everything down and you know, go about your business and then get the other half of the union with the gasket on here and basically do your thing. Let's see if I can grab this. And then this, this would go like this. So uh, be careful with the heat. So there you go, folks. Now you know about electrolysis and galvanic corrosion. You're officially brain surgeons. But all you really need to know, folks, is this. You cannot mix iron pipe with copper or brass. That's it. Bottom line. You'll be good to go. Anyway, I hope you got a little something out of the video. Please don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you'll be notified of when I put up a new video. Also, don't forget to check out one of these two videos that are going to pop up here to my right. One of them I chose for you and the other one YouTube thought you might like to see. So uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Stay well. And as always, happy plumbing.